This video is in response to Samwise 7 RPGs video that I've just finished watching about his top 5 RPGs. Whilst watching it, I thought I'd give you some details of what I consider to be my personal top 5 RPGs. I hope that I'll get around to doing a more in depth review of each of them, but for this video, I'm just going to cover some of the points that I like or dislike about each of them. So, to start, my number one is the Fate Accelerated system or the Fate Core system. They're both variants of the same thing and they're published by Evil Hat Productions. I've done a review of this elsewhere, although I plan to get around to doing a more comprehensive review when I've got time. The main thing I like about this system is it emphasizes story over raw mechanics. The Fate Accelerated system, you can see my copy of the book here, is less than 100 pages long and it's extremely easy for new players to run with. The system can be used on adapted to run multiple settings. It's not tied to any specific genre, which is always a plus in my mind. There's a lot of support for this game at the minute, both in the manufacturer's website on Google Plus, Kickstarter, and in the various published settings that are available for it. Chances are, if you want to do something with Fate, then someone out there has done something like it that you can crib for ideas and you can base your work on. The system, which as I said comes in both the Accelerated Edition and the Fate Core system, which is a slightly more detailed version, is based on the Fudge system by Grey Ghost Press that I was always a big fan of when it was originally bought out. So that's my number one. The number two on my list is the New World of Darkness. Now this is not strictly a single system, it's by White Wolf and Onyx Path Publishing. It ha covers a number of game worlds and has mechanics that are very simple. You add up the number of dots that you have for a particular test, you roll that many dice, and any dice which beat a certain number count as a success. You require a certain number of successes in order to complete your challenge or whatever action you're performing. The game has a very sandboxy feel to it, and each book seems less like a book telling you that this is how it shall be in your setting. Each book feels more like a toolkit that GMs can pick individual elements from that they can use to build their game. This is something I'm quite a fan of. Although White Wolf no longer sells directly to game stores, all of their stuff is available as print on demand through Drive Through RPG. And this includes a lot of their older stuff for the Old World of Darkness, or Core World of Darkness, as they've now started calling it. The World of Darkness games for anyone who doesn't know are set in a dark version of the modern world, although certain expansions have explored historical settings, where players take on the role of various monsters, vampires, werewolves, changelings, etc. Each game has its own flavour, but they all feel very much tied in with this core setting, and they very much belong to the same world. Recently, White Wolf have released a book called The God Machine Chronicles that updates the core rules and tries to make certain mechanics more story-based. I think that in some cases it's succeeded wildly. However, in others, I still think there's a lot of room for improvement. And I hope to be doing a more in-depth review of that at some point. And there is my copy of The God Machine Chronicles, order from print on demand, very good quality. And as you can see, there's a number of bits of paper in there for a game that I'm running at the minute. My third choice is Mummy the Curse. Now, this is a fairly recent game, and it is part of the New World of Darkness, so it's a little bit of a cheat for me to put it in a separate space. However, it's such a, an interesting game concept that I thought it deserved its own separate entry. Obviously, it's by White Wolf and Onyx Path Publishing, as is the majority of the New World of Darkness. It's the new, first New World of Darkness book that I've published via the print-on-demand system through drive through RPG before I even purchased the God Machine Chronicles book I've just shown you. And this is my copy of Mummy the Curse there. Lovely, evocative but simple artwork on the front cover. And the game features players as ancient figures from a pre-Egyptian empire way back in the misty past of the world. The player characters were during this prehistoric era granted eternal life by mysterious figures known as the Judges. Now the player characters, the mummies, spend most of their time in a deep, torpid slumber 
being guarded by their cults which have stretched throughout the eons. Occasionally they emerge in response to certain stimuli. One of the things I really like about the game is, unlike most role-playing games where, where you accumulate power as your character goes along, when your mummy first awakens, they resemble the shambling cadavers of mummy legend and films. And they have godlike power to cause storms, bringing meteor showers down upon their enemies at their fingertips. However, when they initially emerge from their slumber, they have little of their intellect or their memory, which is one of the main themes of the game, intact. And they really resemble sort of undead automatons who are resurrected for a particular purpose and they carry out that with a terrifying singleness of mind and will. As time passes, they regain more of their memory and their sense of self, slowly their form taking on something like what they had when they were alive and resembling less the shambling bandaged horror of many and various movies. But as this happens, they also become mystically weaker. Eventually, when their power reaches a certain low ebb, returning to their torpid slumber. And I find this inversion of the normal power gaining dynamic very interesting. For me, the game's a little bit rules heavy and a little bit obtuse in some areas. However, the writing and the game setting is very intriguing. I don't know whether it would be possible to run a whole party of players as mummies, or whether you'd have to go, as the game suggests, with some of them acting as their thralls or their cultists. It's not a game that I've actually run yet, however it's one I intend to run very soon in the future, since the setting is very, very intriguing. Okay, the next on my list, number four, is the Savage World system. This is a system written by Pinnacle Entertainment Group. Here is my copy of the Explorers Edition. And this game has been, it's a generic set of rules and is not tied to a specific genre again. It's been expanded to cover many different settings, including the Deadlands Weird West game. Because let's face it, who doesn't like cowboys shooting zombies and other horrific creatures of the Weird West? Pirates of the Spanish Main, originally based on a ship combat game, but the role-playing game is very interested in its own right, and a number of others. The Explorer's Edition, which I have the pocket size edition, if you will, is very reasonably priced, and it contains all the rules that you need to run and play the game. The focus of the game is quite story-based, although, in my opinion, the rules are slightly more crunchy than the Fate core system, but some people like that sort of thing. And I don't feel it's so dense that it um, invalidates this as a choice of game. The game has a system called Bennies in it that work a bit like Fate Points in Fate Core and can be given to players by the GM as a reward for good role playing. These tokens, these Bennies, allow the players to re roll certain challenges if the rolls aren't particularly to their liking and gives the player more control over the game in terms of what they see as being important for them to pass, which I'm all for and it's always something I try and encourage in my own games. One of the noteworthy points of the game in my opinion is that it contains rules for weird science, arcane and divine magic right off the bat and straight out of the book. This is one of the ways I feel in which it slightly trumps fate since trim the magic in fate whilst adequate isn't particularly comprehensive out of the book although there are some excellent hacks and material out there to address this problem. Now, last but not least is what the game that I first started role-playing with, and that's Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Now, this has been through numerous editions, which have been variously published by Games Workshop, Hogshead Publishing, Black Library with Green Ronin, and I believe currently by Fantasy Flight Games. I have a couple of editions of this in my collection. You can see the Hogshead version of it there, which is I believe the second edition of it. Very nice. And I also have the third edition there, published by Black Library with Green Rowan Games. Now, editions one through three were largely the same, tweaked and tightened up a little bit as the time went along, but the rule system was largely unaltered. Fourth edition has changed things a great deal more. The fundamental games mechanics have changed, and the game comes with a metric fuckton of components. 
I honestly can't say a great deal more about the latest edition because I'm not terribly fond of games that involve a lot of sort of board game-esque components, therefore I've not purchased it. And to be honest, I find the price quite ridiculous for a role-playing system. And that's before you even take into account all the various different add-ons, etc. that you'd have to purchase for it. So I'm mainly going to be talking about first through third edition in this. And I'll admit before I go any further that I don't have a certain nostalgic fondness for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Since back in the day, I did used to play the Warhammer miniature game quite extensively, Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And, as I say, this is the roleplaying game that I started with. That said, it uses a percentile system that will be familiar to anyone who plays Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And anyone who's played in any sort of percentile system, i.e. the basic roleplaying from Chaosium, which is used for Call of Cthulhu, etc., shouldn't have any problems adapting to this. Characters are designed around careers, such as the Troll Slayer, the Noble, and the ever popular Rat Catcher. Players accumulate skills and characteristic increases based on their career and as they go along. And once that has been completed, they then pick another career and begin advancing along that. I've got to admit, having looked back at it in the course of doing this video, the system does seem a little dated now when it stacks up against more modern systems. However, in my opinion, it still does an excellent job of capturing the grim, perilous world of Warhammer, where chaos lurks behind every door, tempting the ignorant with power, but more often only delivering damnation and mutation to those fools. The Warhammer world is one where, once you venture beyond the safety of your village and the warmth of your hearth fire, you may fall prey to Skaven, Beastmen and worse things that lurk in the darkness out there. Now, this is one of the systems I hope to be doing a more detailed review on later, but I really would recommend that anyone who's a fan of dark or grimmer fantasy settings to give this a go as a possible alternative to the more standard D&D. I think the system stands up fairly well against it, and although there's not as much material published for it since it's never had the benefits of the OGL license like D&D, I do feel that there's enough material available out there and probably fairly cheaply if you buy one of the earlier editions that it's a very worthy contender and stacked up very favourably against the current crop of fantasy level based role playing games. Well that's my five RPGs that are currently the f those favourites that I have. If anyone has any comments on these, please leave them in the boxes below, and I look forward to hearing what your favourite RPGs are.